we're making our way down the mini boulder field here and interesting conversation we're just talking about youtube and i was telling crockett here about there's so many interesting and fascinating aspects of what's going on with uh, you know i can't speak for crockett's uh, youtube projects i'll speak for mine with mine i mean early on i was talking to him about how i was you know exploring different options of how to get the gear and basically several manufacturers wouldn't give me the time of day yeah. and and really i don't fault them and that's led to our conversation we're having now uh, and that's because you know you go to youtube or you say the words youtube to people most people and they think a guy's there in his easy chair lighting his farts not that that's not funny but that's the quality of information they see coming out of youtube what were you saying before I really got involved in YouTube, to me, YouTube was just that. You know, that, people falling down, or a funny email your buddy would email you, you'd open the link. And that's yeah. all it was. Bicycle wipeouts. Yep, yep. And then, you know, I started digging into it, started getting into the... Initially, I started looking at some gun videos, and that led to this little culture. And you see, it's, it's a different... It's different than that. And I think a lot of people don't know that YouTube is... You know, it's a cool place. It can be. Yeah, it, it, it's a lot of things to a lot of people. Yes. In other words, if you go to one channel, they might be doing a comedy channel, and they might have some really funny skit videos, and that's YouTube to them. Yeah. You know, um, here we do something different. You know, you do something different, and, and that is totally cool. That's the beauty of YouTube. It's a new media. It is what you create it, and the, your canvas is right in front of you. It's up to you what you're going to paint on it. Mm, the creation. Yeah, it is. And that's what I love about TMP. To me, it's a creative process that I absolutely dig. We talked about that. Yep. So the, we love creating. And Crockett's the same way. He loves it too. We love seeing things come together. And then when it's appreciated by other people, that's cool. Yeah. That makes it fun. And you have a group of friends that you can hang out with. Yep. Maybe one of these days we'll end up coming down off this mountain, dude all these sidelines and detours girlfriends take being very patient at least she's out of the snow field now we're gonna water her up feed her give her some treats you're such a sweet girl yes you are you're such a good mountain dog i didn't really get to demo her mountain dog st uh, skills on this hike mm. maybe later and we're talking stuff like this boulder hopping yeah baby she does it me, on the other hand, not so great. ugly and wet through here. I think that's what we're going to have to deal with, Dogness. I'm kind of liking this snow field to pitch the tents because one, we can level it. Yeah. Two, it's going to be cleaner than the mud that we're in right here in this drainage area. Downside, maybe not tons of firewood around us. We may have to go scoping. What do you think? I'm game. Cool. I'm game. This is home for tonight then. And I like this. There's a, a workbench there that you can stack stuff on. Stuff that you don't mind getting wet. Time to get the snow blade out, do a little level, leveling maybe. And yes, that's part of that 80 pounds. I brought a snow blade. Why is your pack so heavy, nothing fancy? 
Also, I brought binoculars because there are mountain goats in this area and a lot of elk. There's moose, deer, basically everything. Yeah. So I brought those binos for sightseeing. On a day like today, they're all hunkered down, so we probably won't see many, if any. There's a trail we busted up earlier. Run along that that skirmish line. That skirmish line. I don't think we're gonna get out of the, the rain in the trees. I mean, there's really no heavy timber stands and flat area here. This drives to the point as well that I said in my backpacking tent review series that I don't, generally don't like bivouacs or one man, really tiny one man tents for days like today. I mean, you wanna be in your tent for a long time and you have basically one foot headroom. Yep. And you have a dog. Where are you putting your dog? So she's gonna start off in the vestibule and then she'll probably work her way into my heart and into my tent. But she's wet, nasty. So all that hair is gonna get over all the equipment. That's another reason why we're doing separate tents, Crockett and I. So he doesn't get covered with alley hair. I'm gonna have the clean one. <laughs> or my hair. <laughs> How'd you like lunch? That was scrumptious, wasn't that it? That was a great lunch. So good. We're kidding. We totally skipped lunch because we were working so hard. I think I had about eight corn nuts and some Kit Kat. That's the sum total of my trail snackage. Oh, and then I had like a multi-grain granola bar, which was pretty much awesome. We'll get some chow now, though, once we get uh, yeah. bivouacked here. The whole world changes when you bivouac. Life is right. We may not have a fire, we may have a fire. That's yet to be determined. If we do, we may have to do a plank like I did in Snow Cruise, yo. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, because we're burning yeah, on, snow. Right on snow. I would love to have a fire. I just don't know if we have the fuel. Yeah. Guys always want to know too, what is this? This is the snow claw. Backcountry snow shovel. I actually like these. Not as good as a real snow shovel. Better than nothing. Remember we are talking about that survival shelter? This is how this thing digs. That's how I would dig there on that slope if we had to. Just more of the same is all. Feel free to say stuff too, Crockett. You have my green light. I'm trying to be somewhat muted. Uh, Allie's getting comfy. We'll warm her up with the tent here in a little bit. Gave her some crackers right then. Oh, she found them. Good girl. She needs some carbs. Get her heat heat source working. All right, TMPers, in fading light, we're hunkering down. We're in the middle of a full-on winter storm out here. Temperatures drop down to about 32. It's kind of slushy, turning to snow. It's like the worst possible conditions. Because as, as water, it just seeps into everything. Gets into your clothing, overwhelms your DWR, um, gets into all your fabric, creates a lot of weight. We finally bivouacked. Uh, there's a Kelty Gunnison too I set up. Dogness uh, was under the vestibule, but she came out for some reason. I'm getting ready to dry her off with a towel, get her warm. Crockett, how you doing in your Alps? I'm doing good. There's Crockett's uh, Alps tent that he has set up. He's uh, hook, hooking himself up with some chow, which I'll be doing too. 
over at the hotel nothing fancy and honestly uh, maybe not the ideal tent for these conditions the Gunnison 2 but as you can see it can adapt and I can actually guide out even more I can run those out run those out it's just work um, I'm not doing that right now so I'm just gonna let it ride as is all right may take you in and uh, we'll see what we got going but uh, the conditions out here are just miserable uh, it was a good call to come down from the mountain. We would have been stuck up at the peak in this. Agreed. Don't you think, Crockett? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's bunk. So That's what you do, man. You just make the call. It ain't nothing. It's just a recreational trip. All right, Dogness, you ready to get warm? She's been such a good girl. Yes, I do. You're my good girl. You need to come over here on your pads so you're not... I still got my my uh, boots and stuff on. I haven't taken them off yet. And my Gore-Tex pants are soaked. How's that DWR looking? Good? Is that working still? Nope. Rocking the Nightcore D20 in a headband right now. And we're sorting gear in the Kelty Gunnison 2. Trying to stay dry. Hear that? That's the snow coming off the fly. That'll be a all night process. That's what I told you guys in my review. You're just gonna have to keep knocking it off, otherwise that rain fly just comes on down and touches the body of the tent, and that's not ideal. Filming with one hand, taking this off with the other. Don't work so good. Doc, did you just fart? I'm putting out a fire. You farted. <sighs> Farting's okay outside the tent. Not so much in the tent. My feet are soaked. These are non Gore Tex boots, which I actually prefer. Because usually these are warm weather boots, and Gore Tex just adds temperature that you don't need warmth, I should say. Oh, I need two hands. Oh, you stink. You're not stinky. You stink, dog. Good girl. Time to give Dogness some human food. This is good for her. I forgot to bring her soft food up, and she's totally earned it today. Here you go, girl. And we continue to get rained on, slash snow pelleted on pretty heavily. She's got her technique down pretty good. Just finished getting some chow here in the Nut and Fancy Gunnison 2. It's our hotel, Allie and I. Crockett 20 is in the tent next to us, in his Alps tent, and we're still getting our rain fly totally coated with rain and slush seems like it's warmed up a little bit though because it seems like it's raining anyways um, it was all I could do to film what we did today I didn't really show you all the food prep with just one hand it's difficult wake up in the morning I hope the storm is gone Allie because it's a pain in the butt Ugh, it's a hard hiking day today very hard This Gunnison 2 is doing pretty darn good for as light as, as it is. Um, pretty simple construction. No, it's not a mountaineering tent, but it is tonight. Dude, that Quark 123 makes like the perfect all night night light. Look at that sucker. Perfect. Nothing fancy, Alley the Mountain Dog. 
Crockett 20 next door saying goodnight. You're looking at my highly recommended MSR Pocket Rocket in action. Love that stove. There's lots of options out there and guys will say, well, you know, I like this, I like building my own stove. Well, maybe. I just like something that works, usually, as long as you check your cartridge. You can see even in the snow it's rocking. I actually kept that cartridge in my day pack, which I brought along with me too, part of that huge loadout I brought because we were going to do the summit attempt with that. And that kept it a little bit warmer than normal. And yes, I'm heating it up under the vestibule. Be careful when you do this, of course. You don't want to melt your tent. See how I'm pulling this away as I'm warming up the water. There's enough air inter interchange going from that side to that side too that I'm not really worried about the carbon dioxide for the brief time I'm going to be running this. Be very careful though, and I don't recommend bringing it inside the tent. It was a wet night last night, wasn't it, dog friend? She's finally dried out. When she came to the tent, she was soaking wet. I did the best I could drying her out and drying myself out. And it's really, unless you guys have been in conditions like this, it's hard to explain how difficult they are as far as staying dry and comfortable. Don't you think, Crockett? Crockett 20 is my next door neighbor over there. You can't see him, his tent set up. And it is tough. It is, everything you have is gonna get soaking wet. It's unavoidable. I don't care what your technique is, I don't care how you're geared up, I don't care if you have Gore-Tex. There's my Gore-Tex jacket. Totally soaked. Okay, so those, that is the reality of, of this style of camping. And this is where we are. I gotta be careful, since I got my stove going. Ah. Here, moisture, I mean we had a, we're having a brief let up on the rain and snow, but it's been pretty much continuous since yesterday afternoon. And when we got to this camp place and we chose this snowpack because it's smoother and it's a more comfortable, a comfortable place to pitch your tent in my opinion, albeit you're on snow, but you can level it out. The alternative would be to pitch behind us a little bit in the kind of the muddy area, and that's just even worse. But in this environment, it's uh, you're going to get wet, and it's really tough. Oh yeah, I was telling you when we pitched the tent, you know, we kind of had the idea. Well, maybe let me see if I can show you my ugly face this morning. We we're saying maybe we should, um, you know, build a fire. That would be kind of cool. Let me tell you something. When it's constant rain and snow. It's dark, you don't, want to, you don't even want to mess around with it. You just want to get in your tent and get warm because we were getting cold. And again, getting back to that importance of keeping your core temperature warm, you're always juggling your priorities. Uh, hopefully you are in these types of conditions. And our prior priority was to get the shelter built. So we each pitched our tents and dude, we called it a night. <laughs> there ain't no time for a fire. We're exhausted too. We did some really hard hiking yesterday, very strenuous with big pack loads. So that's how it ran and no regrets to that at all. Pretty soon some hot chocolate will start the morning. My LCD viewfinder on this camera keeps fogging up. It's getting moisture in it. This is my primary camera. It does better video. It is not, however, waterproof and uh, that's a disadvantage. You can hear that waterfall in the background. I'm at a real awkward filming angle, so I can't even tell what you're looking at right now. I'm just kind of showing you all around the area. Hot chocolate complete. This is a little titanium cup that my friend Sadly Missing gave me. I love it. The only thing is, since it sits so tall, the center of gravity is a little higher. You just got to be careful with that. Titanium is nice to carry though and it's compact. This right here that I have my hot chocolate in is a new thing that I'm trying. It's actually a measuring cup I bought at Target and it has a screw on lid to it. So you can seal it off from all kinds of debris like if you're around the campfire so crap doesn't fall in. And it has measuring uh, things on it. So you can like if you're making, I don't know, some freeze dried meals and they call for a specific level. There you have it included. So this is my mug for the day. Mm -mm. Oh yeah. 
Hot chocolate will change the world. Dude, I think I got some moisture in that lens. I bet you I do. Oh, crap. There's a reality of having your dog in the tent with you. Look at the hair. It's everywhere. It wouldn't have been so bad if she was dry, but when she's wet, she just sheds it. And uh, my alternatives are keeping her out there where she would have been cold, bringing her inside. For your reference too, she's part of the Nut and Fancy pack. That means that she's always with us inside the house. She's our guard dog. Awesome. The downside, if there is one, and I think it's minor, is that she doesn't have a winter coat built up. So I have to take that into consideration when I take her out to these conditions. And I take care of her accordingly. That's another reason why you'll see her wearing her rain jacket. And uh, sometimes I'll even put booties on her because her pads will get sore. Her pads, like I said at the beginning of the hike, are pretty much set and as prepared as possible that I can with my schedule make them. And that is running her on pavement and sidewalk. Uh, not always. I mean, I'll run around grassy areas and she can choose where she runs. But enough where it wears down her paws like we we're talking about and strengthens her pads. But I'll tell you, you know, hiking out here in the snow and the rocky terrain, it takes its toll on your dog. And you have to be sensitive to her or him, and they'll give you clues of it. The clues that I got from Allie last night that her pads were sore is she was licking them. And to me, that's telling her that, telling me that, um, you know, there's some soreness there. So I might try to put her booties on her on the hike out, just to give her a, a little break there. And I do like bringing booties um, with me on the trip. She's actually packing them in her backpack whenever I can. The downside is, of course, weight. And I still have yet to find a pair of booties that stays on your dog completely. You know, most of them will ride off. I've had her throw several booties off. And we had to go back and find them. But um, take care of your dog. She heard that name, dog, because that's one of her names. My sweetheart. She's waiting for her food, too. Are you waiting for your food? Are you waiting for your own food? <laughs> She's searching for words she understands. Also, she wants me to let her outside the tent. I'm keeping her in here because why put her out in the cold and wet and too early? It'll just uh, make her miserable too. we got a long hike ahead of us going out. starting to pack everything up and this is my double sleeping pad system that I think I've shown you guys in my backpacking extended stay, stay series of vids. Closed cell foam on the bottom. Again, I'm sleeping directly on snow, no tarp underneath the tent this time, usually I do. And then I have the Thermarest on top with a pillow pocket. This is extra, it doesn't come with it. And it also doubles as kind of a carry case for the Thermarest, so. It's a great system, yeah, it's a little bit more weight. That closed cell phone most people don't bring, they'll just take the Thermarest alone. Looking at underneath the sleeping pad at the floor of the tent, again, no tarp, and actually it does look like some moisture did come through the coating of the tent. This is a lightweight floor and it doesn't have a ton of waterproofing on the bottom. Another reason why I like running a tarp. You can kind of see that moisture, how it came through. So, it is what it is. The only way to fix it is a tarp or you just go with a really heavy coated floor and that adds a lot more weight. So SAWC plays. Just what are you willing and capable of carrying with you? Yes, I bring a backpacking pillow with me on some expeditions, not all. Depends on how weight critical it is. Uh, and guys say, hey man, don't you know you can use your stuff sack and like put your jacket and stuff in it and that would be your pillow? Dudes, I've been doing this a long time. This is a system that works for me. Stuffing your stuff sack full of clothing and stuff pretty much blows. It's not nearly as effective as this. Moreover, everything I had is wet. Pants, clothing, even that fleece jacket got wet inside the backpack. So it's almost unavoidable. So what are you going to do? Put all your wet clothes inside your stuff sack? 
and then you have a wet pillow? No thanks. Um, not every time does it come with, but mostly it does because it's comfortable. It's seven ounces. Yeah, it's seven ounces, I know. I brought it this time, though. Glad I did. It's comfortable. This is our camp location, Crockett 20 and myself, nothing fancy, waking up in the morning and it is a hard chore to get into your wet clothes again. Don't you think Crockett? Yes, I'm, I'm delaying. <laughs> Pants are still damp, flash wet, and yes, it's unavoidable. No matter what technique you employ, no matter the gear, everything's going to get soaked in these conditions. It's pretty much inevitable. Allie's doing the rounds, checking out the campsite. Now you can kind of see why I wanted to pitch on the snow. It is wet, of course. It's packed, dense, slushy type snow. But we can get a nice flat pitching area for the tent. In this case, the Kelty Gunnison 2, which actually did pretty good last night. Crockett 20 says his Alps did pretty good too, right, brother? Yes, I'm very happy with it. Okay, I think I said that on an earlier segment, I forget. Switching back and forth between two cameras. This one keeps condensating. I have to use my waterproof camera. It's not quite as good. This is where I did not want to pitch the tent. And this crap right here. Mud and gunk. Getting your tent covered in mud. No thank you. I'm not up for that. Allie thinks we're starting another hike. But we're not. Tough terrain. Beautiful terrain. There are mountain goats around here. I think I said that last night. Sometimes you'll just be hiking along here, maybe not on that terrain there, but along stuff like that, the cirques, you'll see little white specks, you'll zoom in and there'll be some mountain goats there. Ultra cool, I love seeing those things. This is one thing I like about the gear reviews, is that color coding system. Mine doesn't have that, and I can't tell you how many times I've flip that rain rain fly around right but now that, that just give me an idea all I got to do is get colored uh, electrical tape yeah or the same way I would tie just nylon get some nylon yeah. ribbon yep. cord or something something super lightweight and then, exactly then you know how to do it yep because like last night <laughs> that's not the time you want to be messing around no. with your tent right no <laughs> we we're trying to get our shelters thrown up as soon as we could because the the more you wait just the more soaked you get yes Everything. I mean, and everything that's, I don't know about you, but when we went in our tent, dude, it's like, it's impossible not to bring water in with you. Yes. Yeah. It, it comes in, especially with this thing. Dogness. She's out there chasing chipmunks. Do you know what model of Alps this is? I it's hard to remember them all. It's called the Zephyr. All. Okay. It's called the Zephyr. It might be Zephyr 2, but I know it's the Zephyr. Cool. How much does it weigh? Five pounds. Okay, so yeah, you're right there. That's about what the Gunnison weighs around there. The Alpine mists are still with us, dude. We had a lot of fog yesterday. Rolled in, pretty much couldn't see 100 feet in front of you. Mm -hmm. I called it zero, zero, it wasn't quite zero, zero. Maybe 100 foot visibility when it rolled in on top. Beautiful mountain flower right there. We're careful not to trample stuff as much as we can. Whenever there's an established trail, too, we definitely stay on it. Another snow field. Dare you to get up on that in the tuck, downhill skis, and just rip it. Bam! Birds singing. Rain's 
starting up again, girlfriend. My jacket's probably coated with down, isn't it? Yeah, it's it like is. Everywhere. It's all over that it. Thing just shed like crazy. Okay, this is part of the 80 pounds that I'm carrying. How do you say it? Mercy chocolates? These are awesome. Oh my God. I'm going to turn Crockett onto these right now. Dudes, check these out. Excellent quality. And yes, they're heavy to carry. But on a multi-day backpacking expedition, gold. Chocolates are nasty, aren't they? They're gross. I don't like them. I'm not eating another one. Exactly. There's Allie. She's always on the lookout for any critters. She's been uh, out scoping the area, attempting to chase the ground squirrels which inhabit this area. She won't hurt them. She's just checking them out. They know she's in the area. They're not dumb. That's a cool shot right there. What is that? Boogity, 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 boogity. <laughs> Silly dog. All done. See, that was their alert call, Allie. They know you're here. Still a game for her. She likes it. And no, it doesn't harass them. Like you guys saw, I packed up a lot of my water with me. Yeah, it's crazy heavy, I know. But it's nice because I'm self-contained and like uh, we were on the glacier up there, it could come in handy. You guys will say, well, you can, you know, melt snow. Melting snow takes time, it takes effort, work, and energy. You probably didn't bring enough fuel to cook all your meals and melt all your water. We're going to look at the Crockett's water filtering system that he brought. What is that, Crockett? This is a... Uh... Okay, there it is. Just one of those stop top filtration system, systems on a Nalgene bottle, huh? Yeah, it's 20 bucks and replacement filters are 10 bucks. It's not bad. Um, it certainly has its downfalls. Uh, to, it's funny, when I got it, the pitcher on the box, there's some lady drinking out of it and the water's coming out just fine. I mean, <laughs> and for me to get it out, no. <laughs> so if you're looking for a good drink of water, this isn't it. It's just going to filter it. What I normally do, to give you an idea... Look at that, how much pressure it takes. I mean, it, I'm squeezing it pretty good. And that's a new filter before it starts getting clogged up with sediment. Yes, yeah, a brand new filter. I had to buy a new one before this trip. But the way I manage it is I'll take this, filter it in here, and then I can use this to get a good, good flow of water. Yeah, so, sounds like it, a plan. It works. It works. It's workable. Now, if you sat here the whole time for me trying to fill this one liter bottle, yeah, this sucks. I'd run out of battery. <laughs> and I'm going to run out of forearm strength. <laughs> There's nothing like a good, dedicated water, water filter, like the Catadyne Hiker. It used to be formerly the Pure. That's what I have in my pack with me. It is, it's heavier than this that he has. Again, we're talking about weight. SAWC, as usual. But you get what you pay for, and that Catadyne, you can crank it out, fill up your Nalgene Mylark water containers, and have gallons, if you want, at the ready at your campsite. Now, with me, out my technique in my bivouac style of camping, and you'll probably see more of this in the Nut and Fancy project, is um, sometimes our water filtering areas are removed from the campsite, like a long ways. We're convenient at this particular location. Sometimes you ain't, and you have to take a trek to go water, uh, filter water, and so uh, you kind of want to get that task done as quickly as possible. That's where perhaps a, a dedicated water filter system, uh, when I say dedicated, I'm talking about like a pump style, helps, and it's also good for groups. Can you imagine trying to provide a group of people of water with this? Wouldn't work. For an individual, like you say, it works. And it is cost effective. What'd you say? How much did the system cost? It's 20 bucks and then 10 bucks for the filter replacement. Okay, so the cost is pretty affordable. I mean, okay, how long have we been talking? And that's what I've got. So you can see the downside to it. 
some filters also, it just depends on which one you have. Even pump filters will come out kind of slow. I am looking at upgrading, but that comes with time. And it's working for now. Yep. Now I backed this system up with the, the water pills. I won't leave anywhere without them. In fact, yeah. the last trip I was on, uh, the filter broke. That's why I had to get a new one. And without that, we would have had to go home. Or nice. boil the water, but that takes all your fuel to eat. Good point. Mind if I yeah. show your dog? We do YouTube videos. Do you yeah. care? Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Looks like Allie found a friend. We have a hiking friend that's passing our way. Yeah. Headed up. Right on, dude. <laughs> good yeah, times. Hopefully we can get up there today. Great Danes are that good dogs. So Hello, dear sweetheart. It's a male Great Dane. Yeah. He's good a, personality. He's a gladiator Great Dane. <laughs> is that's he? he is. Yeah, he's a massive mix. Awesome. So that's why he's got so much. Huh. Cool. All right. Let's good go, luck. Thanks, Safe guys. hike. You too. Have some good hiking. See you later, buddy. Okay. So, what do you do if this is a multi-day expedition? Everything is soaking wet. No matter what your technique is. Hey, I want to do this. I'm going to do that. Crockett, what do you think? You're going to keep everything dry? Absolutely not. I've got dry bags with me and everything is soaked. Yep, it's just gonna happen, dudes. I've done this numerous times. Every time you winter camp like this, it just gets wet. The answer to that if you multi-day camp is you have to bivouac and make a fire and do a drying rack. And you may not get, even with that, how are you gonna dry your nylon tent out and your fly? The answer is you're not. You're gonna live with it wet. And that is the harsh reality of high moisture winter camping. And there's no getting around it. Now, if I always, I always prefer it to get really cold. Because then it frosts and it gets icy. And then I, it's lots, so much cleaner. And I can break the ice away. Don't you think, Crockett? Yes. But here we got rain falling yet again. It gets into everything and you can't get rid of it. Snow is preferred by me. Not sleet and slush though, and rain. It sucks. And remember the extra water weight I was talking about at the beginning of the trail and the start? Here we are. I'm probably packing six ounces of water in this rain fly that I can't get rid of, no matter how I shake it. I think I've got 10 pounds each sock. <laughs> <laughs> wet socks, wet fleece gloves. We don't have a fire to dry them out here. Can't make one. There's not firewood. Again, it's a high use area. I don't want to waste time doing that while it's raining anyhow. I don't know about you, Crockett. No. It's a waste of time. Looking inside this tent now. Since just in the time that I took the rain fly off, how much rain has fallen in it. The realities of rent winter camping. How do you prevent it? Well, just keep the rain fly to it and roll it up with the rain fly. No, oh, dudes, that doesn't work. That does not work. Maybe with some designs. Very few though. There's a lot of things that sound really good on paper and in the magazine and the catalog. But when you get out here in the real world and start working it, it doesn't work. Now that's one thing. I love reading articles and stuff. And I get a lot of good ideas, but the best learning environment is where we are right now. Exactly. How much have you learned on this trip, Crockett, a for ton. your own system? For me, this has been by far the biggest learning trip I've had in a very, very long time. And part of it is due to these conditions. Yep. This is probably the toughest conditions I can think of, just because of the rain. And yet it's not warm rain, it's cold rain. It's on the borderline of snow and sleet, so you can get hyperthermic like that. So you better watch yourself in these conditions. Just like we did yesterday, I'm so glad we made that call, you know. I'm probably carrying another, I don't know, 10 ounces of water in this now. Also, if it ever did relent, the weather broke and it stopped raining for maybe six hours and the sun came out, 
I might be able to save this. In other words, dry this tent out. But the weather we've been having non-stop since pretty much we started yesterday has been this. Just miserable. I'm trying to shield the camera as best I can. <laughs> it's and just... it's not fun. No. This is miserable. <laughs> it's work and it's it sucks. Anybody who says otherwise needs to come out and do it. But we'll manage. We'll always get through it. Dude, this tent is so wet. Yeah, I'd much prefer snow over this rain any day. Exactly. All about it. Campsite broke. Getting ready to start the hike down. And we were going to go above the tree line, but due to safety concerns, which we've told you about, we kind of bailed on it. Uh, we ran out of daylight, the snow conditions were pretty uh, serious as we were going, so with the loads we're carrying, and more importantly the time we have, we just went to plan B. And actually it's been pretty interesting and informative as we've uh, played out in it. Yes, yeah it's been fun. Wet. <laughs> soaking wet. Everything we have is soaking wet. So maybe in other days we'll take you above the original location we had planned. Stay tuned to TMP. We'll see what happens. Um, but we're going to start our hike on down. We're delayed, ready to rock and roll. Yep. And uh, we'll maybe do a little bit of filming, talking on the way down too. Alpine mist coming in again, Crockett.